So I am back again to talk you through some best tips for working with seasonal fabrics. I did a video on Halloween fabrics. I did a video on holiday fabrics. Links for both of those videos will be in the description box. And today I wanna to talk to you about spring fabrics. And luckily I just got all of the swatches from Stylemaker Fabrics in, so I'm using those. I'll have links in the description box for those exact fabrics as well, the ones I'm about to show you guys. But what I thought I would do is pick out some of the fabrics from that collection that I feel like really represent spring. Fabrics that I feel like we will be sewing with or should be sewing with in the next month or so as the temperatures start to warm up. So I picked a um, a rayon chalet, naturally. I picked a rayon jersey. I have a cotton seersucker, a cotton eyelet, and a linen. And I am going to talk you guys through each of those fabrics, how you should be cutting them out, how you should be sewing with them, what needle size you should be using, stitch length, serger, no serger, um, and also how to press all of those fabrics. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up we have this really beautiful rayon chalet. Um, as you all know, I love working with rayon chalet. It makes the most beautiful, like flowy, drapey, uh, dresses and tops and I really love it for the spring because you can make dresses with those like billowy sleeves that are so popular right now. You can make long maxi dresses that are super super flattering. Because rayon is a natural fabric it's breathable and super comfortable to wear. Working with rayon chalet is really pretty straightforward. Um, the cutting of rayon chalet can be a little bit tricky. So I really like to use pattern weights. And I have these really, really cute ones that I got from this shop on Etsy. I will link it in the description box below. But basically you take your pattern pieces, you lay them on top of your fabric, you put these all over, and then you use a rotary cutter to cut around your fabric. And that is better than scissors because as you are cutting with scissors, inevitably you are lifting up some of the fabric and it can be really, really shifty. So I love a um, rotary cutter with pattern weight to cut out your rayon chalet fabric. Sewing with rayon chalet, really straightforward also. You need a uh, microtex or sharp needle in a smaller size, like size 70 microtex would be absolutely perfect. You use a regular straight stitch at your regular stitch length. And then finishing off the uh, seams on the inside, you can easily do with a serger, but rayon chalet is also really great for French seams. So if we were gonna pretend this was a French seam, because it is so lightweight, um, the French seam doesn't add a lot of bulk to your seam and it can also also reinforce uh, the seams, especially ones that get a lot of like wear and a lot of like when you're wearing it, it gets a lot of uh, tension put on it. It can reinforce the seam of the lightweight fabric as well. But a serger works just as good if you've got one of those. And then pressing, I've got my Aliso iron here and I have it set to well, I had it set to a higher temperature. We're gonna turn that all the way down to the silk setting. It is a natural fiber, it's not synthetic, so we can have a little bit more heat, but we really want no steam. Again, because it is so lightweight, you really don't need that extra boost from the steam. And you can just press open from the wrong side, obviously. And if you have French seams, you know, obviously you'd be pressing just to one side, but you can see a really quick pass and the seam is exceptional, flat, and really, really beautiful. So rayon chalet. This uh, also works really well for fabrics like rayon poplin um, and rayon twill would, would apply the same um, principles here. Just those fabrics are a little bit heavier, so you'd wanna go up in your needle size, but everything else should be the same. Okay, next up we have a cotton eyelet. Um, this one is really beautiful with all of these little concentric circles kind of offset. Um, an eyelet can be surprisingly tricky. 
obviously you have, you know, all of the embroidery and then the embroidery has all the holes in it. So when you are sewing it together, you really want to make sure that you're paying attention to when your needle is going through the holes and therefore you probably want a smaller stitch length than you normally would just to make sure you're catching as much of the fabric as possible. And when it comes to cutting, you can use your regular scissor method or you can use your rotary cutter. Just know that when it's cutting through all of this thread, that it's gonna put a lot of, um, a lot of pressure and a lot of tension on your rotary blades. So they may not last as long. Um, so I kind of prefer scissors for this one. And for your needle size, we're working with a, a regular cotton. This one's fairly lightweight, kind of like a wall. You want to try and assess that before you pick a needle size. So we're going to choose a universal needle um, size 70 or 80. Okay, so now I've got it sewn and I used a, a small stitch length you can see there. But I also want to point out that when you press your um, eyelet, you want to make sure that you trim back all of your seam allowances so that when you press it, you aren't covering up so many of the holes. Inevitably, you will cover up some of the holes, but um, if you trim them down first to like a quarter of an inch, then the fabric will still, you know, stay sewn. Uh, it won't come undone, but you also won't see a bunch of it through the right side either. Okay, and when it comes to pressing, so the fabric behind is cotton, but sometimes the threads that they use to embroider it can be a polyester thread. It can be a synthetic thread. So you really want to make sure that you're pressing from the wrong side. And again, you're using a lower heat, especially in the beginning as you're trying to like test it out just to see how... Um, the threads behave. You don't want the threads to burn. They will become like shiny and they'll look different than the other threads. So what I like to do is ping this up to a cotton, like the low end of cotton, especially if it's a thinner cotton fabric and apply a medium amount of, of steam. So I've got it set on the medium steam setting. And then we're just gonna press to one side like so and you've got a beautifully pressed seam. Okay, next up, we've got a seersucker. Now, seersucker is really, really great for spring because it is 100% cotton. It um, is very breathable, very easy to wear, but it has a little bit of structure to it, which you might like for some of your spring garments. Uh, seersucker is super easy to sew with. I mean, it's basically a cotton. Um, so when you're cutting it, you can use your scissors, you can use your rotary blade, whichever um, you prefer. When you're sewing it, you're using a universal 80 size needle, very straightforward. You can serge it if you want to. Um, but when it comes to pressing it, you do want to make sure that you're paying attention because you have all of these beautiful, like this texture, kind of like a crepe on steroids <laughs> because it's like even more pronounced in a seersucker and you don't really want to press that out. You want to maintain that, especially if, you know, you're pressing along here and all of these get flat, except all the ones on the rest of your garment, like all out here are not flat. Then it kind of starts to look a little bit different and weird. So you are going to ping down your heat all the way down to like a wool setting and you're also going to ping back your steam and because it's cotton i promise you it is going to press super super easily and um you really just don't need a ton of heat or steam to make that happen you can press from both sides on a cotton fabric so long as your heat isn't too hot and you just want to make sure that you, you know, preserve as much of that texture as you possibly can. So that is seersucker. All right, next up, I have a rayon jersey. It's beautiful. It's lightweight. It's drapey. It's comfortable. And it comes in a ton of different prints, which make it perfect for spring because you can get your florals, you can get your geometric, you can get your solids, uh, whatever your style is. And similar to the rayon chalet that we used, rayon, again, is a man-made material. Um, so it's going to be lightweight. It's going to be breathable. 
Um, but this one has a beautiful stretch, which makes it really, really great for spring um, knit dresses and knit tops and things like that. So I always sew my knits on the serger almost exclusively. I hardly ever put it through my sewing machine at all. Um, I just can, you know, handle the serger in a way that I can do all of the seams on a serger. So in your serger, you're going to want to make sure that you have, you know, two of the same needle. Rayon is going to be very, very lightweight. So, and it's a jersey, which is a knit. So we're going to make sure that we're using our ballpoint needle. And because it's so lightweight, a small size. So a size 70 ballpoint needle is what you need for a rayon jersey. Uh, and then zip it through your um, serger and we're going to press to one side. Again, it's very lightweight, um, so we don't need a lot of heat and we don't need any steam. So I've already got it set to the wool silk setting. We are going to turn off the steam completely and we are just going to press to one side. Like so. It presses really beautifully, as you can see. And creates a beautiful, stretchy seam. Rayon jersey. Okay, the last fabric that I pulled for spring is a linen. I mean, you cannot go with wrong with linen in spring or in summer. Again, it's a super breathable fabric, but I like linen for spring because it has a little bit of structure to it. So it's going to make those beautiful like layering pieces that you love, like lightweight jackets, but it's also going to make dresses with like cute little sleeves or, you know, skirts that you can pair with different tops and cardigans. It can even make pants. Um, so it's really a very versatile fabric that you can make tons of garments from. Um, so when it comes to sewing and cutting and pressing linen, it is again, like cotton, very, very easy to use. You just need to cut it out. Again, you can use your um, rotary cutter or your scissors, either one should be fine. And when you sew, it is a mid-weight fabric. So you want to make sure you ping up your needle size to a size 80. And you can just use a universal needle on linen. When it comes to pressing, we need to crank this guy up to the linen cotton setting. And we're going to use a bunch of heat and steam. Um, because it is sort of a, a mid-weight fabric, it needs a little bit of heat and steam to, you know, for us to be able to tell it what to do. <laughs> so we're going to press these open. You can obviously run linen through your searcher to finish off your seams. So you wouldn't necessarily be pressing it open unless you're um, lining it. But you can also see just one little pass how beautiful that seam is. So this is linen. So as you can see, spring fabrics are very, very forgiving and very, very straightforward. You don't have any of that funny business with metallics or nap or any of that other crazy stuff that we talked about in the previous two videos, Halloween and holiday. When it comes to springtime fabrics, it's easy, it's breezy, it's light and working with them should feel the exact same way. So hopefully you will grab some of these fabrics and give them a go this spring season. That is gonna do it for me today though. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.